And like any surgery, you always have retraction. And because we're not using a speculum, uh, it's important. So posteriorly, it goes under the conchal cartilage and then should come out in the uh, in the cadaver. It's somewhat tough. There, just in the sulcus. You see? Right in the sulcus there. So I got it. So you go under the conchal cartilage. And then what it does is it slings around the conchal cartilage and pulls it backwards. And they may seem like insignificant steps, but every little step, like a stapes procedure, makes a huge difference. Thank you. The, the danger of using the suture rather than the Lone Star is that you can cheese wire the uh, conchal cartilage. So you need in real life <coughs> to put um, a gauze under here. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the next thing to do is to uh, remove the hair and, and any wax. So we'll just use a round knife. So a small point I mentioned to a few of you yesterday, the way you hold the scope, you can see that I'm holding it basically in my fingertips. There's a lot of different ways of holding the scope and a lot of the great EES surgeons do different things. But in my experience, I prefer the subtlety of just holding it in your fingertips like a musical instrument. I think you get a more balanced positioning of the endoscope um, so I, I, for the zero, like the cord between my fingers, fingertips on top, and then the thumb underneath. And I, I would advise you to try different, different techniques and find which is best for you. Okay, so that's most of the rubbish out. So I prefer the iris scissor to the Bellucci to cut the hairs, but it doesn't really matter. But it's very, Im very important step. Yeah, time spent doing this will save you time later. So when you place your scope into the ear, just a simple thing, but if you put your scope straight into the, um, if I come in, if you go straight for the hole, more often than not, you'll hit uh, a hair on your way in, and then you're blinded. So it's much better if you see the, the gold area on this tip, to place that on the side wall first. Okay, so place that on the side wall so that the tip of the endoscope, which is the optic part, is in the midair. Okay? And then go into the canal. If you just try and go in straight off, you'll hit something. Boom, 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 boom. So hit, get stability on the side and then go in. It can be very quick. You won't even notice you're doing it when you've done 100 cases. But at first, just put the scope on the side and then go in. And that way, you, you won't hit the hairs, OK? Oh, hello. Let's hope that's not the eardrum. Nope, good. <laughs> Operation finished. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Okay, good. Right. So we have quite a moderate overhang in this patient. So this is a, a, a difficult one to do with a, a microscope. Gorgeous. So here we have the eardrum. You can see with the endoscope, you get this amazing view of the uh, anterior recess. So yeah. So my advice when you're making your incisions is to use a straight knife. Here I have a D knife or a plester knife, but equally you could use a sickle knife, but my biggest advice would be to use a beaver blade. A beaver blade is a single use instrument, but it's very, very sharp. So when you're choosing your incisions, tailor it to your operation. In this case, I'm gonna make the cut at about uh, 11 o'clock and about six o'clock, okay? But you can make them anywhere. So we're gonna go from about 11 o'clock, always start medial and then come lateral. 
press very hard with the blade and cut once. I'm pressing hard and going slow. Okay, and make your incision firm and definite. Okay, one cut like that. Okay, not sawing, da 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 da, none of that, no making a mess. We want a single precise cut because then the edges will come together at the end of the operation. And never cut forwards, always cut towards you. So six o'clock, firm as you can, pressing really hard. You see the instrument bending and cut once, okay? And then change to so that way you're, you're faster because you've done one cut, two cut, three cuts, you're in, okay? And then I'm changing to a round knife, but curved beaver blade would be the preference. So again, it's harder to do it in one cut, but I'm pressing very firmly in the vascular strip and slowly try to cut just once, okay? So I'm pressing very hard. I'm cutting all the way to my other line and then stop. So I'm not going back and forth and back and forth once, okay? And then I, I would change now to a suction round knife, but we, we don't need that in, in the cadaver, so I just use the normal round knife, okay? And remember, you can overlap your incision. It doesn't matter if it's across. No one's looking at it. It's inside their ear. So by doing a cross, you ensure that you've connected your two lines. And always operate on a broad plane. Okay, never in the pocket. You want to operate across the flap. And slowly but surely work your way down. Personally, I prefer just to use a suction round knife, but you can use a neuro paddy and place it above to, to collect blood. But I prefer to use just the suction and see everything. So broad plane, broad plane, broad plane. Okay reflecting back when you start to get so i've held my endoscope quite far away okay but now i'm approaching the annulus come in come in close okay because then you can see the subtleties can everybody see the fibrous annulus there here this white line here so you want to be under that okay you want to be on bone and you can see the quarter there so in we go to the middle ear. So staying hard on bone. Okay. So coming in and out with your scope as necessary. Until we raise the flap. Can everyone see the quarter timpani there? So some suction, please. Thanks. Okay, so we open up the middle ear now, and we look at the anatomy together. Okay, so yeah, make sure you, you want to get in the attic, right? Everyone's, I want to get in the attic, I want to do the clostoma. But before you get there, make sure you um, open up right to the Six o'clock, okay? Right to the inferior aspect of your incision. Because that way you, you'll be able to um, reflect back your tympanomiatal flap. See, so it, there's this, often this mucosal sort of adhesion or mucosal band here. So you wanna just remove that so that everything flap, flops forward. Very thick. Can I have you? Uh, I've got some scissors, Bellucci scissors. Can you see that's being held there by that little mucosal strand? So you notice that each step needs to be methodical. Okay, you need to be a perfectionist. Don't rush your endoscopic surgery like a stapes. Take your time. And by taking your time, you, you're actually faster. It's a weird situation. Okay, round knife, please. Okay, so we're going to look at the attic now. So when you're doing your dissections, go very slow at this part because I want you to see Prussac space. So by pulling the ear drum down, 
you'll see where the chorda tympani goes under the neck of the malleus. You can follow the chorda. In, it's a very nice landmark in real patients as well. And you eventually will start to see the malleus handle. And you'll see the chorda going underneath the neck of the malleus. So slowly just edging that tympanic membrane off the chorda. Following the chorda. The chorda is your highway. Okay? It's like the digastric. It's your friend. Use it for anatomy. Okay? So now we can see the malleus handle here. Yes? And you can see the attic area here. Uh, autofocus, please. So you can see the um, quite a small little uh, posterior malleolar ligament. So at this point, I find the, the round knife is not the right tool. See how it doesn't really doing what I want it to do. So here, I would suggest getting a right-sided cut forcep. And, and you're actually pulling the tympanic membrane off the lateral process. So ideally, you, you want cup forceps to the right and the left. Here we just have a straight. But the cups are quite gentle, usually. So you can gently pull the eardrum down. See how you can see it coming off the lateral process. All of these steps are pretty much every case. So the, this is worth spending time on. Okay, because you're not going to be drilling the IAC every day, but you're going to be doing this every day. So just pulling it down, and now we can see the lateral process of the malleus. Uh, now the round knife again. Yep. Yep. So can everyone see this thing here is the lateral process? Here, bonk, bonk. So there's often a little cartilage cap, which if you pull it off, helps you find the plane. I think the cap is actually just there. Can you see that little indentation there? That's the cartilage cap that's come off. And that usually gives you the correct plane. So now you can bring in your endoscope and look for the plane on the malleus. Uh, Rose and needle, please. Curved needle, thank you. So that now you follow the malleus handle and make a plane onto the bone. And you want to take the, well, depending on the case, but in for the anatomy today, we're going to take the tympanic membrane completely off the malleus. So this area here is prosac space. And it's separated from the epitympanum by this, which is the lateral malleal fold. And laterally by the pars flaccida. And medially by the neck of the malleus and the lateral process. Okay? And to get into this area, the only entry point is through the pouch of von Trolsch, which in this case is fairly blocked but it's through here. This is the pouch of von Trolsch. Posterior pouch of von Trolsch. The anterior one is usually closed. So push your eardrum forward and then continue to take your drum, Bellucci scissors, please, off the malleus handle. And if you bring your endoscope right in up close, you can usually see the plane very clearly. But you need to be careful at the umbo where the eardrum is attached firmly Rose and needle again, please. Because you don't want to uh, leave squamous tissue there implantated. Implanted? Implantated. New word. Implanted. So, see how we're taking the drum carefully off the malleus? Okay? And no tearing. Tearing is obviously not a good, uh, good thing. So, s this, this is a slow part of the operation. Okay? And you can come right in with your scope so that you can s s be confident that you're getting it off. And this is the hardest bit, getting it off the actual umbo at the end. It's 
So it's gently persuade it. Round, uh, small round knife or small? And there we are. Eventually it comes away. Okay, so now the eardrum is detached from the malleus handle. Okay? Okay, and so round knife, please. So my advice then would be, when you're practicing on your temporal bone, to bring the eardrum back. So pretend you finished your operation, and just have a practice at re replacing your eardrum before you remove it. So you see the benefit of e endoscopic ear because you've made those single cuts. Everything goes back beautifully. Okay, so you want to see the drum practice replacing the TM flap. And if you've got it right, it should fit absolutely perfectly. And you know then that's going to heal well. Okay, those edges are all opposed, right? That's going to heal well. You've just taken the drum off the malleus completely, but there's no perforation. Okay, this is what to practice, okay? So you know there's no implantation of squamous disease because it's still intact, okay? So that's the next step to practice. Now, for, for anatomy, we now go on to do something we won't do in real life, but remove the drum entirely. So we make an, a f an incision to connect the other incisions around the front. Can everyone see how that comes together it should come together perfectly. This is one reason I, I prefer not to use diathermy, because diathermy, it shrinks down, and you have bone lying, and it granulates. So I prefer to tolerate a little bit of blood and um, get a perfect cut. Okay, so now we're going to remove the drum completely so that we can see the other anatomy. as if you were doing an onlay now. Any questions? All make sense? So when you've got the drum down, you should see the annulus. See the, can everyone see the annulus there? And then you'll need to make an incision with the rosin needle into the mucosa. So the mucosa is here, and we just incise it with the rosin needle. Into the middle ear. This is not a thing you'll do in real life, this is for the anatomy, okay? And then I'll take a alligator, please. Now the drum should hopefully come out more or less in one. Hopefully. Fingers crossed, here we go. It's probably being held somewhere. Okay, voila. Okay? So now, we're, now we'll have a look at the anatomy of the middle ear. So notice how the umbo is the center of your eardrum, OK? OK, so I'm going to show you uh, the various anatomies. So anteriorly, we have the eustachian tube, a little bit of drum remnant there. This here, this bony ridge underneath this drum remnant, is the protoniculum. It separates the protympanum from the hypotympanum. The hypotympanum extends from the protoniculum to the funiculus. This is the hypotympanum. 
This is the protympanum. Protympanum extends from the protoniculum to the um, tensor canal, which is here, which contains the tensor muscle, and the supratubal recess, which is a smooth area here. And then the tensor fold, which separates that from the epitympanum, which we'll see later. Within the uh, protympanum is the uh, carotid artery, just here underneath my needle. And this is a quadrangular uh, uh, protympanum. This is the subtensor recess, this area here, underneath the tensor tendon, tensor muscle. Coming backwards, the posterior limit of the protympanum is the um, um, Jacobson's nerve running across the malleus here. And you can see the contribution from the carotid uh, of those vessels coming over here on the uh, promontory. You can see the carotigotympanic vessels. Um, we have the malleus handle here, and we have prostate space with the lateral malleal fold. Here is the quarter tympani, which heads over the incus, then under the neck of malleus. If we change to a 30 degree scope, we should see a little easier. So we go through the anatomy of the retro tympanum. So everyone can see the stapes. Uh, the stapes here with the pyramid and the stapedius tendon. And note the orientation of the oval window, which is in 90 degrees in two planes to the orientation of the round window, which is under its niche here. We have the um, ponticulus here and the subiculum here and a very small sinus tympani here, which sometimes communicates underneath the pyramid. This larger area here is the area, the subtympanic space, which has the fustis, which is this hard bone here see this hard ridge of bone. In some cases, this will take you directly to the round window. In this case, it takes you just inferiorly. Underneath that is sometimes a little area that will take you to the petrous apex. I'm opening it up now. That's the subcochlear tunnel. So you must be careful not to put your implant in that area because that will not give you any hearing. But it is an area of access to the uh, petrous apex through here. Sub cochlear tunnel. Next we have the funiculus, which is the final, if you think of it as the final border, and beyond that is the hypotympanum, the jugular bulb just underneath my pointer, carotid artery just further ahead. You can see this slight pink hue of the carotid artery. So in the funiculus is usually Jacobson's nerve. See Jacobson's nerve here, runs in the funiculus over the promontory up to the uh, cochleariform process, and then in continuity with the cog. And we'll see that in a moment. So that's the retro tympanum, and easily seen. The facial recess is much higher. Do you see the corda here, and you see the facial nerve below. So the facial recess is just between those two. It's, more, it's very, very shallow in all cases. It's the sinus tympani that's the problem. Okay, so next I would suggest we uh, take down the um, lateral malleal ligament, which separates prosac space here from the epitympanum below. So we take away that membrane, lateral malleal membrane, and then we can see into the epitympanum. So note how prosac space is very small the epitympanum is very large. They're quite different areas. So now you see prosac space in its entirety. So we, we're going to curette the uh, scutum here. When you curette, it's like uh, scooping ice cream. So it's a curved motion rather than a straight motion. And try and keep your edges as smooth as possible. And don't try and take too much bone at any one go. Just a small amount each time. And you'll be, again, more efficient because it won't get stuck. So slowly but surely, just a bone by bone removal. So the malleus head nipper, 
we usually do after you've taken the incus, but I'm doing it just to try and show you the anatomy. So if we go under the neck here, and Rosa Nida. So can you see now that the, ma uh, the corda runs underneath the neck here, here. So here's the corda nerve. It runs under the neck and exits through the petrotympanic fissure here with the anterior malleal ligament, which is this one, and the artery, the uh, anterior tympanic artery. So the three things come out through the petrotympanic fissure, just here. But the other really important thing, heading anteriorly from here, is the tensor fold. So this is a 30 degree, I think, yes? So if we turn it to the side now, we can look at that supratubal recess and the uh, tensor fold heading forward from the tensor tendon. So I'm just moving that forward now. If I break the anterior malleal ligament, like so, voila, then that will flop down. And then you should be able to see corda tympani here and the very deep supratubal recess. So this is a vertical tensor fold heading up this way towards the cog. So if we now uh, remove the incus, can I have a small joint knife or a joint knife? When you divide the incudostapedial joint, uh, this one. Always do so from a posterior to anterior direction so that you stabilize the joint by the um, pyramid. And always, it's always lower than you might think. Uh, it's a little bit big. Rosen needle again, thanks. Um, because of the lentiform process of the uh, long process of the incus, it's always a little bit lower than you might imagine. And you can find that by just raising up and down like this. You'll see where the joint is. See how you can see the actual joint is a little bit lower. It's about here. So always go from a posterior to anterior direction and you will stabilize the stay piece on the um, pyramid and the stapedius. Okay. But once you've rem removed that joint, then you're safe to actually remove the incus. So let's see if we can pull out Mr. Incus. we will remove as well. So uh, can I have a cup full set? So I'm going to take the quarter away, take the ossicles out and show you the epitympanum. So this is the incus. You can see the, uh, I'm holding the long process. You can see the short process. You can see the body where it articulates with the malleus. You can just leave quarter there. And then the head of the malleus. the head of the malleus, oops, which uh, wants to stay in the ear. The head of the malleus, which articulates with the body of the incus and has the superior ligament heading up towards the tegmen. Okay, brilliant. So let's use the uh, Mectron device now, please. So I'm going to curate now the attic. So you use this like a curette, as if you're curetting. It's like a powered curette. So can you see how that cuts the bone and uh, leaves the mucosa alone? It's quite incredible. See how the mucosa is completely preserved there. It's just taken the bone. Um, 
Okay, super. So now can I have a Rosa Needle Mush look at the anatomy of the epitympanum? So when we come into the epitympanum, let's see what we can see. So first of all, the most important thing that if you've never done an EES course before, I think the most important thing to take away from this course is the tensor fold. Uh, in this case, it was lying su uh, superiorly in a vertical orientation, and it separates the epitympanum here from the supertubal recess here. And generally, the supertubal recess is very smooth. The epitympanum is very rough. You can see some mucosal folds here. If you take those down, you'll see the full extent of the uh, epitympanum. And lying in, in here is a bony ridge called the cog. Cog has really no relevance. It's just an interesting anatomical landmark. You can see I'm, I'm revealing the cog now, this bony li line here. But it's interesting that the cog, the cochleriform process, Jacobson's nerve, and funiculus are all in a line, always. Cog, cochleriform process, Jacobson's nerve, funiculus, one line running through the center of the ear, okay? Because these are important landmarks when everything's been destroyed by uh, disease. So we have the cog separates anatomically the anterior epitympanum, which is small, from the posterior epitympanum, which is large. We're looking into the antrum of the ear. Can we autofocus, please? That's better. Okay. And you can see the lateral semicircular canal. Facial nerve here, uh, pointer. Please, if anyone has any questions, just jump, fire in. This is the facial nerve here. It's covered by bone. And here is the lateral semicircular canal. And here is the aditus. And uh, beyond that, the, the depths of where we can see is the antrum, or the mastoid. And so you can see why we, we generally say in Okay, have you got a curved instrument like the Thomas in this one? The, the limit of your dissection endoscopically is pretty much the posterior boundary of the lateral semicircular canal. See, that's where my instrument can get to. If it's beyond that, you really should convert. Okay, so that's the limit of where we can get safely with our instruments to date. Okay, so this is the lateral semicircular canal. This here is the facial nerve, this white structure here. Okay, you can see the facial nerve runs superiorly and posteriorly to the cochleariform process. So this is the geniculate ganglion here. And heading forward from the geniculate ganglion up here is the uh, greater superficial protrosal nerve. Okay. Okay. So now we're getting interesting. How, about, how much time have I got? A bit more? Good. So I'm moving Jacobson's nerve away out of its uh, bony sulcus. Okay. And we're going to now go and do the inner ear. It, please, if you have any questions, fire away. So we'll move everything out of the way so we can see a bit better. Okay. Can I have the Mectron device again, please? So it all makes sense so far. Now, can you see BB-8? You can see the... If you're going to repair this, you need the, you need a, a piece of cartilage for the epitympanum, and you need a, something to reconstruct the tympanum, which looks, I think, like the little robot in Star Wars. But there we go. So I'm going to just curate this away so we can see a bit better. That's great. So we have. First genu of the facial nerve, tympanic portion of the facial nerve, second genu of the facial nerve, curving round, giving off a branch to the pyramid, which supplies stapedius on the st um, stapes tendon. And then heading down through the stylomastoid foramen through here. Gives off the corda tympani about, I don't know, seven millimeters or something above, and that comes out and goes across there, which has been removed. So. Uh, scissor, please, to cut the tendon. So to get to the inner ear, usual landmarks, because otherwise if you just start drilling randomly, 
you have no idea where you are. So the oval window and the round window are your absolute most solid landmarks. So cut the tendon and then remove the stapes. Yeah, that's perfect, that red one. So here comes the stapes coming out now. So they everyone see the stapes? Can everyone see that the posterior cross is generally big? Anterior cross is generally small. You can see the uh, head of the stapes. And you can see the foot plate. And when we've removed it, you can see underneath it the membranous labyrinth. So let's take it out of the way. Stapes. Okay, so now let's go and have a look inside the vestibules. I think for anyone doing stapes surgery, very, very useful thing to do. Can I have the uh, suction, please? Uh, yep. So very gently sucking inside here so we can have a look. Um, pointer. So sometimes you can still see the saccule and the utricle. We'll see. Yes, here's the utricle here. And here is the saccule here. So you can see that when you put your stapes piston, if you place it in the center, you're less likely to hit any of those structures. Is there a little tiny, tiny hook? So if you have a look at this measuring rod, this, this uh, soft tissue here is the saccule. This soft tissue here is the utricle. And this, <coughs> this direction will be the cochlear duct. So the next thing I recommend to do is to join the round window and over window. So curette, please just stand a curette. So we're going to take the, the, <coughs> the round window niche. Is there a smaller one? Suction, please. So once you got rid of the niche, you should be able to see the actual true round window membrane. Pointer, thanks. <coughs> so I want to point out again the orientation of those two anatomical entry points to the cochlea. Here we have the round window membrane. I'm going to try and bounce on it. Boing, boing. There. Okay, that is the membrane to the round window, yes? And this is the oval window. So you can see that this is at 90 degrees to this one, and this is at 90 degrees in the second plane to this one, so they don't get phase locked when the sound comes in. Okay? We know that this window will open into the scala tympani, because that's where we put our cochlear implants, right? Underneath the basilar membrane. This window opens into the scala vestibuli, because this is the vestibule. This is the tympanic cavity, scala tympani. This is the vestibule, scala vestibuli. Okay, so we're going to join the two now with the curette by simply flicking open the piece of bone overlying the two. So you enter here and flick inferiorly. Like that. And this small one? Is this the smallest? Great. So now, pointer. Now we've removed that bony ridge that lied over the top, and you can see this is the round window membrane. Okay? I'm going to peel the round window membrane down. 
and you can see that that enters the scala tympani, which is separated from the vestibule by this wall. Okay? Where and this wall is the osseous spiral lamina with the basal membrane coming off it. So above the osseous spiral lamina will be the scala vestibuli here. And that opens into the vestibule where the cochlear duct is. So sound waves pressing on the stapes, boom, 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 send pressure waves through the scala vestibuli, up and around the cochlea to the helicotrema, down the scala tympani, and then out of this window here. Okay? Does that make sense? And I think seeing it with your endoscope will be make this the clearest it's ever been, I hope, to you. So I'm going to curate just this part here, and you'll see the classic view of the cochlea that you're used to. So if we curate here, and up. And suction, please. You should see that classic two scholars and the uh, basilar membrane between. I just want to get a slightly better view for you. I lift this out. I think you'll see better. Let's try that. And suction, please. A very fine suction. So can everyone see those two scala and the difference? Yeah. Any questions? No. Clear as mud. Just press on the button for me. Press on the hole for me. Yeah, yeah press on the hole. Okay, and let's focus. Okay, cure it, thanks. I think maybe the zero will be better again. Five more minutes. Okay, we're pretty much done. Okay, so in the interest of time, we're just going to take you down to the IAC, but I, I think we've shown you everything I really wanted to show you. So, if we continue, uh, autofocus, please. Great. So, we're going to curate the basal turn away. Lovely. And then you can see the dark cells here that produce the perilymph. Not that many in this case. Here. I'm, this is bone, right? This is the osseous spiral lamina. This is soft. This is the basilar membrane, which separates scala tympani, scala vestibuli. Okay, so you can go in either channel. Okay, this one comes back here. This one goes where our cochlear implants go up there. Okay, so um, we're going to just um, metron again. Thanks. I'll just quickly sh try and show you the IAC, and then we finish. We'll have a cup of tea. So basal turn, apical turn will be up here, and middle turn, so just under the cochleariform process. So if you curate ab just below the cochleariform process, I'm going to go a bit faster now. So just under here will be the middle turn. Okay, you see the middle turn now. So basal turn, middle turn. And again, the middle turn will have those same anatomy. Okay, so can you see inside the scala tympani and above the basal membrane, the scala media. Sorry, scala um, vestibuli. There. So you see those two layers. 
Yes, two layers here, two layers here. Try and show you in 4D. 4K, I mean. There we go. Beautiful. So you can imagine the cochlear implant going round and then coming up again and back, okay? And maybe I'll end by just showing you some of the anatomy in the vestibule. If I can. Here, right, please. So there are various recesses within the I just curate that part off there, which is the pyramid essentially. Yeah, great. So now you can see the entrance of the posterior semicircular canal. So I just uh, have a pointer, please. Beautiful. So in this case, the saccule is preserved and in the spherical recess. So I try and show you that. Here, this is the spherical recess, and, and this material here is the saccule. So I'm scraping the saccule here. It's been punctured, so it's not full, but this was the saccule. And if we go down, actually, it's now 30 degree. I know everyone wants coffee. I'm nearly done. This is probably the most complex m part of the anatomy, which is why I'm doing it so quickly. <laughs> but it's also probably the least relevant clinically, but very interesting. So, okay, so let me sh try and show you some last things. There, isn't that beautiful? So see that hole going down there? You, s you see this hole? That's the posterior semicircular canal. You're looking end on onto it. Beautiful. That little uh, tiny ridge at uh, just just under my force my pointer here is the endolymphatic sac. The utricle opens under this ridge here, the ridge on the on the right, and the saccule is this one in the spherical recess here. So spherical recess, I'm trying to go round in a circle. Elliptical recess underneath this ridge where all the semicircular canals join. And the posterior semicircular canal just beautifully shown there. We're looking right down it. So the IAC will be directly behind here. Autofocus, please. You can almost puncture it with the rosin needle. It's thin, thin bone. And it's in line with the IAC. So the EAC and IAC come together. The facial nerve, which is here, first genu, which is the geniculate ganglion, will then do an absolute right uh, U-turn and come down this bit of bone here and into the IAC here. It's seven up. It's the superior, it's the most superior nerve anteriorly. Below it will be the cochlear nerve. The cochlear nerve will come directly up into the modiolus, the center piece of here. You can see where these things are spinning around it. So the, the, the cochlear nerve will be in this plane cochlear nerve is inferior to the facial nerve, which is coming up here. And then posteriorly are the two vestibular nerves, the inferior and the superior vestibular nerve, which are posterior, which is why we go retrotympanic and we go uh, translab, because that brings us onto the vestibular nerves first. Uh, let me just see if I can show you the IAC, the last thing. Okay, so let's just get our bearings. Here's the modiolus. Yeah? So this will be inside somewhere in here will be the cochlear nerve coming up. Just there. This is the cochlear nerve here. Yes? Everyone see? The top part of it is the bottom part of it. This is the cochlear nerve. This will be the facial nerve just here. And the inferior, oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? There's the vestibular nerve coming back here.
So inferior, sorry, superior vestibular nerve here, cochlear nerve here, and facial nerve here. Is superior vestibular, inferior vestibular? It is definitely, yeah. The facial may be between the two. This could be facial here. I think actually, yeah. So you can see them bifurcating here, and this is probably Bill's bar. Yeah. It's quite a nice specimen. Uh, it's not uh, destroyed. And yeah, very nice. So through there, we could go and look at the. Uh, brainstem, but I think with a four millimeter camera it might be difficult, but in there, down there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs>